Hey guys, Joel K here from joelkphotocourses.com, bringing you another free online tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to use the develop module to produce a portrait in Lightroom 5. And we're going to be going through all of the different settings and all of the adjustments that you can make to add that little bit of sparkle to your photo. Now you can see here on the screen a before and after shot of just using the tabs of the develop module. No adjustment brushes, no other fixes. So I'll take you through this little process and you can see all the capabilities of the different adjustments and you can use them however you like. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Y to get rid of this comparison, tab to bring in my little adjustments and make sure that I'm in the develop module by seeing this little sign lit up right here. Okay, so you see on the right, all of the tabs of the develop module are all collected. And to bring them all together like this, you can just hit this little triangle beside each name and they hide and unhide as you do that. Okay, so let's reset this photo to where it was at the beginning and quickly crop it in and uh, let's get started. Okay, so the basic tab. This tab controls the tone of the photo and the presence and the white balance. And the first line you see here says color or black and white. And depending on what your preference is, you can change it to black and white. But in this case, I think I'm going to stick to color because we have that nice blue in the background. And the next section is white balance. And where it says WB, you can see it says as shot. If you click there, you have three options. As shot, auto, which sometimes does a good job, but this time doesn't, and custom. And custom is basically just allowing you to shift these sliders as you like. And these sliders, temperature and tint, are giving you the capability to either warm up your photo a bit or cool it off a bit, depending on your preference. And tint takes away magenta and adds green as you slide to the left, and adds magenta and takes green away as you slide to the right. And to bring it back to zero, you can just double tap where it says tint and temp. Now Lightroom also gives you an automatic kind of mode, which is this little dropper right here. You can click on that and find a white spot in your photo, not completely white, but pretty close to white. And Lightroom will do the guessing for you. As you can see, it added plus 13 uh, warmth and took away 15 units worth of green and added magenta. Now I think that might be a little bit much, so I'm gonna bring that back down to 10 and that down to eight. So I think that's pretty good. All right, the next section is tone. And this section gives you all kinds of control over uh, the different sort of sections of your photo in terms of uh, exposure. So you can see the histogram up here. And this is showing you all of the pixels in your photo laid out from darkest to brightest as it goes from left to right. And you can actually grab the histogram here and move these pixels. As you can see, as I move them to the right, the photo gets brighter. Um, and this also moves the slider down here, which corresponds to exposure. And each of these corresponds to a movement in the pixels on the histogram. And as we move contrast, for example, you can see that pixels move to the left and pixels move to the right. And that shows that you know, you're adding contrast to the photo. And again, double tap the word to bring it back to zero. So what you can do is brighten the photo a bit by dragging the exposure slider to the right, bring down the highlights a bit by dra dragging highlights to the left, and so on. I'm gonna add a bit of whites. I'm gonna take the blacks a little bit darker. And you can see that that's kind of giving the photo a little bit more depth. Now if I hit Y here, you can see that the whites are a little bit brighter and the darks are a little bit darker and the photo's kind of coming alive. And these are kind of general settings that I like to use on almost every photo, maybe just a bit of contrast as well. And of course, it depends on your preference, but uh, you could drag the highlights right down and really kind of crush them down. Um, but, you know, most people will kind of like a, a well-exposed normal kind of image. All right, that brings us to the next section, presence. Presence has a couple of very powerful sliders. Here you can see clarity. Clarity adds a kind of micro contrast to your photo. 
As you slide it to the right, you can see your photo will get grittier. And as you slide it to the left, it'll get softer. And for some portraits, it's useful. For others, it may not be. It depends on your preference. I'm going to add just a little bit of presence, a little bit of clarity to this one. OK, vibrance. Vibrance is a really smart way to add saturation to your photo because it respects skin tones and it adds saturation in a very smart way. So as you can see, I dra as I drag it up to 50, that this photo doesn't look you know, overly saturated. It might be a bit saturated, but it doesn't look crazy. So as I bring that back down to zero, you can see what happens when I just drag the saturation slider to 50. That looks way oversaturated. So I'm just going to grab this vibrant slider and bring it up just a touch. Depends on your preference, but I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, so that's the basic tab. As you can see, if we hit Y to show before and after, that's pretty powerful, and it makes the photo really start to pop. OK, the next section is the tone curve section. And this gives you the same capability to control the brightness, the shadows, the whites and blacks in your photo, but this time lays it out on what we call a curve. Now, there are two modes of the tone curve tab. One is where you just get to drop anchors and shift this line around to bring in contrast or to brighten or darken certain areas of the photo. And the other way to control it is to click this button and it'll show you the different regions and you can control the shadows, the darks, the lights and the highlights by sliding them to the right and to the left. And another smart way to handle the tone curve is to grab this little target right here. And if you click on a certain spot in the photo and click and slide upwards, you can see that it brightens that area and downwards and it darkens that area. And uh, if you need to reset it, you can always hold option and click where it says reset region and that brings you back to zero. Also, if you say taking your highlights down, brought your lights up, brought your darks up, and your shadows down, and you like that look, you can always flick this little switch right here to show you what this tone curve has done to your photo. Now, I think that's a bit extreme, but I might actually take a kind of less extreme version of that and apply that to my photo. Let's see, before and after, before and after. Yeah, it's starting to pop a bit. And the last section of the tone curve, you see down here it says point curve linear. And that allows you to just add an automatic setting to your photo, medium contrast or strong contrast. And if I add a bit of medium contrast, you can see it darkened the blacks and brightened the brights. But I'm just going to keep that on linear. All right, so that's enough of the tone curve. Let's move now to the hue, saturation, and luminance tab. As you can see, you have all of the different settings laid out right here in front of you. And if you click, for example, on saturation, you can see all of the colors laid out. And if you drag the sliders to the left and the right, that's adjusting that particular color in the photo. So you can see now the blues are really saturated back there or really unsaturated back there. Uh, so I'm just going to add a bit of blue to the photo. And um, likewise, you can grab the little target and change the saturation of a certain section based on its color. And uh, the same goes for hue. You can change the hue of the blues, for example, make them more green or make them more purple or pink. Um, and the luminance, again, that's the brightness. And the blue is a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. You can see there like that. Um, and by clicking color, it lays it out by color, but it just shows you the same capabilities. And by clicking black and white, you change your photo to black and white, and then it gives you the same capabilities in black and white. So let's keep it in color. And let's just add a bit of the blues, and that's how I'd like to do it. OK, so that's the Hue, Saturation, and Luminance tab. It's very powerful. And if you get to master this tab, you can see a real difference in your photos. So here's a before and after. You can see the blues are really starting to pop. All right, next one, Split Toning. Split Toning gives you the ability to add a certain amount of color to the highlights and to the shadows of your photo. And this is very popular in fashion photography especially. And uh, you'll see that it really gives an edge to your photo. Uh, so the way to do this is, the easiest way to do this is to click these little gray boxes next to where it says highlights. And you can now select any color you want and tint your highlights. 
uh, just by selecting them. So let's add, let's say, a lot of red. So you can see now all the highlights have turned red. And that's not really pretty looking, in my opinion, but um, you might like it. Luckily, Lightroom gives us a couple of options here as kind of defaults. And I like to pick this center one right here. And I think that gives a nice kind of warmth to the highlights. And you can hit the X and get rid of that. And you can see you can control it also from here, the saturation of it um, and the balance of it between highlights and shadows. Now, if you click shadows, I'm going to go for the suggested setting of blue as a shadow. And um, I'm going to change the balance to make it emphasize the highlights a little bit more than the shadows. And now you can see if I flick this setting off and on, what happened. So it just tints your photo a little bit and gives it a kind of different look to it. Of course, you could go crazy and make it a, you know, a blue on blue kind of photo. Um, and, you know, just have fun with it. This is one of those really sort of creative um, tabs. So there's before and after again. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, next one is details. Details are where you can add sharpening, noise reduction, and color noise reduction to your photo. And because we shot it in JPEG, the camera already did a lot of sharpening in camera, but we can add a little bit more if we think some sharpening could, could uh, liven up this photo a bit. So I'm going to drag the amount of sharpening to the right just a bit, and I'm going to leave radius and detail alone. Uh, you can play with them if you like, but the most important slider here is the masking slider. If you hold Option and you drag this masking slider to the right, it shows you that Lightroom is now applying that sharpness to only the edges that it finds in the photo. Originally, it applied it to the entire photo, but as we drag it to the right, it applies it to less and less and less of the photo, and now it's only applying it to her hair and her eyes and all of the white in this photo here. So here, if we let go um, and we zoom in, say, on her hair up here, you can see a before and after. And it's, it's a subtle change, but you'll notice it in the final version. In fact, let's add a bit more sharpening. OK, down to noise reduction. Noise reduction does two things. One, it gets rid of the uh, digital noise that's created mostly in the shadows of photos. And you can see, if we zoom in, that there's you know, you can kind of see the pixels. And if we slide the noise reduction slider to the right, it tries to guess at what color that area should be and tries to get rid of the pixels. It has the added benefit of smoothing skin. So if we zoom out here, you can see that the skin looks a lot smoother than it did before. And if we dr drag it back down to zero, you can see that change. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of noise reduction right about there. And it kind of smooths things out a bit. Now, I'm going to leave detail and contrast alone. You can play with them, and it changes the way the noise reduction is applied to the photo and sometimes creates artifacts, but feel free to go ahead and play with them, zoom in, and see what happens. The color slider, again, adjusts the color noise in the photo. And in this case, I don't think we're having much trouble with color noise. So I'm going to zoom out here and move on to lens corrections. Lens corrections gives you four abilities to correct the f any flaws that your lens might have had when you took the photo. I like keeping it in manual because that gives me the ability to fix distortion in the photo. As you can see, if I slide left and right, it changes the distortion in the photo. Also vertical. This is helpful if you've shot buildings from the ground. Horizontal if you want to straighten something out. But applied to, f to portraits, none of these are very useful except for aspect. If you want to slim somebody down a bit, this is a little trick. You can just slide this aspect to the right, not more than, say, 20. But you can see that that made her look a little bit slimmer and a little bit taller. In fact, I think that's a bit much. I'm going to bring it down to about 8. So you can see what that did. It's a little kind of secret tip. Um, and if you click on color, you can get rid of defring you can get rid of fringing, which is an artifact in some photographs, especially uh, around bright points, you get a bit of color that doesn't exist um, to the eye. So that you can get rid of that by sliding these around. Uh, profile, you can enable Lightroom to add the adjustments that it thinks uh, are necessary. 
based on your lens. And if you've shot in RAW, this will allow in, uh, profile corrections automatically done by Lightroom. And if you hit basic, uh, there are a couple of different sections that I never really use. But um, basically the tip is to keep it on manual and play with the aspect ratio a bit for portraits. And the next section is lens vignetting. And if you can see that the corners are dark in your photo uh, and you want to brighten them up, you can play with the lens vignetting. But here, there isn't much to deal with. Next section, effects. Now, if you wanted to add vignetting, this is the slider to do it. You can see that it's a lot more powerful and has a lot more different settings. For example, we can bring the midpoint in. We could change the roundness of the uh, center. We can change the feather. We can really sort of make it a gradual change. And we can change the way it uh, darkens highlights. So I'm going to add a little bit of vignetting to the photo just to keep our attention on the model and uh, see if you like it before and after, before and after. Basically just darkens these areas that aren't in the center. And it's up to you. OK, next one is grain. Grain adds, well, grain. Um, you can see if I zoom in here to this area, if I start sliding this grain, this adds you know, a certain kind of roughness to the pixels and I can change the size of it and I can make it really rough and that'll look like, I don't know, some kind of fuzzy image. Uh, and I don't like using grain at all. Some people do. It's a creative thing. Moving on to the final tab in the develop module, camera calibration. I suggest not really messing with this tab at all unless you know exactly what you're doing because Lightroom does it all pretty well if you have it on the 2012 current standard of camera calibration. So yeah, just go ahead and leave that one alone. And that is all the develop module has to offer except for the tools that you see along the top here. And if you want to learn more about using these tools, you can check out my video called Top 10 Tips for Editing Portraits in Lightroom, where I go through how to use these tools to their best effect uh, while editing portraits. And if you'd like to take a look at where we started from and where we got to with this photo, you can hit Tab and then hit Y, and you can see that the photo is really starting to pop, the colors are starting to get saturated, and uh, it's just a lot more appealing photo. If you want to hear more from me, you can go ahead and click subscribe or check me out online at www.joelkphotocourses.com where I offer complete courses on almost every aspect of photography. All right, thanks for listening and see you next time.